This is the Risk. Grand Novice series, where I, a Grandmaster on the Free For All ladder, share a lower ranked game. From this, hopefully more people will see the game of Risk. Newer players can improve their play, and maybe we'll get to see something crazy. The number one thing you should take from this is you do not have to be number one to have fun. So get out there and play some Risk. The more people we have out there playing Risk and having fun, the better it is for all of us. So we're getting into this game. I'm going to have to place a capital down somewhere in these settings. Wow, if I was actually playing this, I'd be pretty happy with this because I've got all my troops. In, in the same general area, I could toss a capital down and then I could uh, secure a continent. But we are playing a little differently. Where'd we see the, the first two bots go? Blue and orange. The so blue went right here, orange went right here. Uh, nobody's going for this area, although I might see pink on the area. I don't want to intentionally block pink, but pink may also go here. Um, I just need to be out of the way. So. If I were pink, I would go up here. So to stay out of pink's way, I'm going to go right here. See where pink chooses to go. Here or here, maybe. Okay, wow. Europe may be noticing that the bot, uh, while it is neutral, maybe they want to eventually take that. So why is this interesting? Why did I say this is interesting? Because we are doing... A neutral AI. We are doing fixed balance blitz, capital conquest, which is the game mode on risk global domination. And it took so long to fill a lobby. I was trying to fill a lobby on a different map with different settings. It took 16 minutes to fill this lobby. The other lobby, it took so long, I decided to drop that. But this is interesting because these people have actually entered into, they might not realize it, a 1v1v1. So there are three people actively playing and vying for first right now. They just might not know it. And most they think, well, actually, since there's one bot, this is actually a 1v1. Um, so this is purple versus pink, which, which was not my intentions. I wanted uh, three individuals. But because we had that bot out and I am not playing, we've got four bots and myself. So this is going to be purple and pink vying for first place between each other. They will at least not get third place because well hopefully i'm taken out before either of them are taken out and these capitals are other capitals out here the neutral ai capitals and my capital capital are capital capital no capital <laughs> uh these other capitals so these bots are going to be playing and the idea here is hold on it's my turn how are we going to do this don't worry, purple. I'm not rolling you. I'm just trying to roll myself out. Okay. So the idea here is, and I guess we've got one neutral AI from the individual that didn't ready up, and then we've got two easy AI. Okay, so Ping's coming in, they're gonna take me out, um, get a horrible roll, so we might see the purple player come in, because that will not be reinforceable by the pink player, because they've got no troops in the area. And so a two is gonna be so, so easy to uh, knock down. Oh, wow, so just the roll's not working out now for the pink player, so a two is in, taking the chance on that that 10 on five when no one else was really going to go for that. No one else was going to go for me. That was very, very risky. Will the purple player player choose to take their five troops from their upcoming turn and put them into my former capital now pinks two stacked capital and secure that and then have that that lower area down there uh, in the future locked down. And these easy AI are actually attacking. I think I have it on easy AI, right? Let's see. Yeah, they're attacking quite a bit. And uh, no one actually went for Australia. That's very interesting. In a fixed capitals game on this map, Australia, I think, it can be very powerful. So 
especially at this level, just having those those extra bonus two troops plus the bonus two from holding a capital, I think that when no one else is going for it, that is not a bad place to be. Especially with the, the pink's capital plate in the cement. That's that's very interesting. Right against the bot. And uh so I guess we have one neutral AI from the one individual that didn't ready up, and then we have two easy bots, and the purple player does not choose to go for that that capital from the pink player. So the purple player, I think, um, maybe not making a mistake, but the lack of aggression right now may build up over time to a greater advantage for the uh, pink player. So I think we should see in the upcoming turn the pink player reinforcing that and continuing on. Um, potentially the purple player can go for that red capital up there in, in Asia that now... Oh gosh, what did I miss? How did the purple player get two capitals? Where was I? Where was I during this? What was I looking at? What was I focusing on? Was I looking at the settings? Hold on. Use the rest of our turn to find out when purple rolled a capital. So this capital is in Ural. Look for that. That just happened right away. Got a lot of scrolling. It must have happened very early. What what am I missing? Okay, so I guess the What in the world? Well this is this is just embarrassing, isn't it? Just letting my turn timer run down. Sorry, I don't mean to stall to the other people, but I guess it's not stalling if I'm genuinely trying to figure something out. So it looks like okay, I am missing something here. When did the purple player take that? Yeah, I'm going to have to focus a little bit more seriously. This is this is so embarrassing. Um Egypt. It's got to be somewhere on the purple player's turn, right? Like but I feel like I've looked in that and didn't see anything. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, I, I'm going to have to rewatch this later. I have no clue how the purple player got that second bonus or that second capital. I, I don't know where I have been, but perhaps it it doesn't scroll back far enough for me to actually see that. That I guess that's a possibility. Um, well, I wasn't the first to go, and the the earliest it'll let me see is myself. So I guess you cannot scroll back that far. I don't know if that was always the case, but wow, good for the purple player taking that second capital and me missing it. So maybe that's why the pink player felt so pressured to secure second capital for themselves to make sure troop income was even in between the two players. But the purple player now securing a third capital. They are going into this fourth round, fourth round, uh, the first fourth turn cycle, which is where having all the capitals really counts. Um, that's where securing all six of the other capitals will give you the w regardless of who's left in the game and they're halfway there so the purple player now really needs to focus on uh keeping <laughs> keep doing what they're doing keep their capital strong and this fixed game they're in a great position they can deny a europe take which this this ai is already doing so the the pink player should not expect it to take europe Purple can, it's going to be hard. Okay, hold on. We got to roll ourselves down. That's also going to be hard to do because I don't want to accidentally take anything from anybody, which we might do. We have, okay, we accidentally did, and I did not want to do that. We're going to roll ourselves down. We are now going to be worth one card, so maybe worth taking out. So the purple player perhaps cannot forever deny South America, and the pink player needs to take South America 
to equalize the troop income with the purple player. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but hopefully they can try and do that and secure it because they can stop right here and never open this capital back up. But all the troop income from the purple player is going to make it very hard to continue to hold that. We're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the three. So nine. So how big does this need to be to make sure the purple player cannot break it? Well, a lot bigger than five, I think. So the purple player could choose to open up South America again. And then as, especially if they have a trade on three. And as we start getting into the trades, that capital down there with only five on it is very, very vulnerable. I do not see these easy AI hitting the capitals. Um, at least not very tactically. I think you should see it coming. So not a lot to worry about there over in Asia from the purple player. That's just extra troop income floating around. And it looks very, very good for the purple player. Still, no one securing Australia. This is very interesting. What does the purple player choose to do here? They are in the driver's seat right behind them, though. Hailing them very closely is the pink player. Do they choose to bring South America? I think that is a great idea, and I think they should do that. So a 9 on 5 is not 100% roll. This is dangerous, but it does work out, and it's actually a pretty good roll. If they had a trade on 3, they could have even hit, hit even harder and possibly taken the capital, putting the pink player in a very bad situation, but they choose to just attack an extra time let's see if they choose to bring that five back to the 16 i think i think what you do if you're the purple player is you put that five right here so that way when the pink player tries to retake you have that the already some troops here to be able to re-break south america and these bots are actually getting pretty strong the orange bot on 37 troops and the red bot on 21 that is nothing to laugh at that is dangerous. They are essentially stopping the other players from taking continents that they might be able to take, might have been able to take otherwise. Imagine if we could see the pink player holding North America, which we cannot see happen just because the bot's in there and they have a lot of troops in there. Nobody's going to be taking Australia. I, I think this might be a game where nobody takes Australia, which is, is unheard of. Um, I think uh, in in a fixed game on this map, I suppose there are fixed uh, five round blitz games that you do not see Australia taken. So, you know, maybe I I'm not. Uh, maybe what I said is 100 percent true, but the pink player does not reestablish South America, I suppose, to make it more more cogent of a thing to say. It is very unusual do you have a game where Australia is not taken? Let's see what the purple player chooses to do now. If they have a big trade, they might try and roll that capital. Don't know if it's a good idea, especially when the bots up here are surrounding this little bitty capital, which is, is a double-edged sword. One side of that sword says, well, pink player's not going to be able to get in here to me. On the other side of that, the bots can, and the bots uh, are less tactful in their decisions. So it looks like the purple player may just choose to remove me from the game and at the same time take out. OK, so that that uh, that those two capitals up there are going to be pretty safe now with the 12 stacks on them. And it looks like I'm going to be removed from the game. And at the same time, the purple player is going to be able to take Africa, maybe even hold that. I don't think they should expect to hold it unless they put a split right here and neither the bot or the pink player has anything to see about it. Let's spectate and see what comes of the purple player's turn. Here we go. So, are we going to see a split right here? Are we going to split? We are not. So, the red bot very easily could break this if that's the type of bot this uh, we have in the game right here, which looks like it is. It's going to come in here and break Africa, but really, the pink player doesn't need to worry too much about that. Oh my gosh, it moves upwards. I did not expect that. Wow, attacking upwards. That is very interesting. It could have easily broken this. Hard to understand why it wouldn't. See what the pink player chooses to do here. If they do choose to break 
Australia. They will be opening up that 20 stack. That is very dangerous, especially if the purple player has a trade on three. They could then lose. They could lose this capital. I might like to see this five fortified down here just to ensure that they are able to maintain that capital location because in the long term, the very long term, the purple player is in a position to win, I think. Um, they have more troop income, and when you spread this out over a very, very long time, hope, and if they have more time, you know, time is a finite resource, and, you know, you see who has more of that in the games you're playing. Um, but I think the purple player is in a great position to take this game long term. I think big moves are going to happen either when or if the purple player goes for this capital or the pink player goes for this capital. Um, I don't think we'll see anyone swoop in and take Australia. I don't think we'll see anyone take North America. And the purple player is in a dominating position. Uh, things that will progress the game are going to be removals of the bots. But the bots are getting so big and they'll continue to grow alongside the other two players that who's incentivized to do anything about that? Not really anyone. And actually the purple player breaking South America, which I think is... A is a good idea reason being and continuing to attack to the south i'm not sure exactly why they, they continue to choose to do that but they do reason being is right now from your three capitals you have a guaranteed six troop income while your opponent has a guaranteed four you get the, those two extra from the extra capital you hold and then the extra three bonus troops you have um but you're not guaranteed to hold africa but if you let south america be held by the pink player now you've just allowed them to have the same amount of troop income as you so this is as much about troop income denial as it is increasing your own troop income and the big trade isn't going to come out for the pink player let's see what they choose to do with that they could put a heavy guard on south america but gosh it is so dangerous imagine losing in troops 11 troops because you put a heavy guard down and then the purple player had a trade and then they chose to break you so very interesting the pink player is moving into north america i think a a long-term play if it works out is taking north america because it's going to be very hard for the purple player to regularly break back in there because right now if you can put a guard on all three locations i suppose this capital can come in but once you put a guard there and this this territory is already taken then it will be very hard to get in so because let's say because you don't want off troop caps if you don't have to have them you would you like, like to have a 13 here and 13 here or would you rather have a 26 here so very interesting situation the bot coming into north america removing a lot of the pink players hard work but progressing the game might involve hitting the red bot or moving removing it so the purple player fortunate enough they are not broken and they have so much troop income right now they are very far ahead of the other players they have they have over twice as many troops as the pink player this looks like to be a game where the purple player is going to just keep growing and growing and nobody is going to do anything about it. Nobody can really do anything about it right now. And it's okay. I'll tell you why it's okay. Because when we think about rank points and where these people are, these people are not over the rank of intermediate. Actually, the purple player hitting the pink player really hard, just taking away their territory count maybe recognizing it recognizing it's just a 1v1 with some bots in the middle but what was i saying so three people entered this game so you were going to get first second or third you know the bots the bots we say don't count for rank points and I'm pretty sure that's not true like it it is it is true that they don't count for rank points let me say that <laughs> so the pink player leaves here with a W. They not first place, but they should go up 
from where they are if they're a very low ranked person. Um, when you're at the lower ranks, it is so much easier to climb the ladder compared to when you're at the highest ranks. When you're at a, when you're a grandmaster, if you lose one game, that could be the you could it could drop you down to master or get you very close to dropping down all the way to master. So, um, or let me rephrase that: it when you're a grandmaster and you're on the edge, getting second place is going to drop you down for sure. If you're like a top 100 player or you're a top 150 player, getting second place might drop you down to the 250s. Like it'll drop you down. It really will. But when you are a player at the lowest, you're, you know, you're a novice and you take second place out of three. Maybe you're just a slightly higher ranked novice, which is which is great. You didn't go backwards and you played a game and you learned something and hopefully you had fun. I think the pink player has made some has made moves. I think the, the pink player has taken the time to push forward and do something about the situation. It hasn't worked out. The the red player that the pink player hits so hard in North America has 15 troops back in there. That's rough. Um, if you're the pink player and you want to try and pull a W. You might just have to if you want to if you want to take first place. You might just have to sit back and hope the bots get so strong that the purple player has to do something about it. But that is so far away, I think that we'll see if the pink player wants to stick that out or even even wants to do that right now the purple player should feel very good about this game oh no so we have that bot it's it's stack is going to be touching the capital of the pink player which is very dangerous because it's not going to want to leave that area now. I will say very fortunate for the purple player to secure their these uh capital so early we think about earlier on in the game where the pink player attacked my capital got was was left on that capital with just two troops um i think that was a pivotal moment i think the pink player should not have done that at that moment um i can understand maybe if there was pressure from the purple player considering they had two capitals already and then they secured a third um eventually i think could have even taken my old capital i think that was a possibility but i think that was definitely a moment where taking a risky role has resulted in the state of the game as it is now by the pink player not that it was a bad role to take that was a bad role to take i i think having that guaranteed income and keeping the purple player out of south america as far as having that capital and then securing that bonus i think that's great but i do think it was one of the moments in this game that was that was most impactful so it'll be interesting to see here where the purple player chooses to take this game we were talking about what the pink player could do which is one of the options is nothing um, and then try to have a greater amount of the finite resource that is time. Or um, hope that the bots get very, very strong and the purple player starts having to contest with them. Those were some of the options uh, suggested for the pink player. What can the purple player do to ensure that this game is is locked down as theirs and they are able to close it out and move on to the next game. So the purple player may look to choose to expand. That is an option for them right now. It's getting pretty crowded up there in Asia, and we may see the bots, the orange bot specifically, choose to roll the 
one of those capitals in in the long term. I don't think we'll see that anytime soon, but we may see that in the future. So gaining more troop income right now. Great idea if you're the purple player. So maybe you start looking towards Australia. It's going to take a long time because that 16 is there and it's going to keep stacking forever. Maybe you start looking towards taking that capital next to the pink player's capital there in Europe, that blue capital. I think it's very unlikely, and I think the pink player right afterwards would have something to say about it. And none of the stacks are really open to it right now. If we look, the purple player has a one right here and a one right here. So this 27 can't really get up there. And this 20 can't come around because the stack will then not be big enough to hit this capital. So if the player wants, the purple player wants to look at closing the game out sooner, they need to start looking at getting more troop income. And maybe they should work with the pink player to remove the red player. Um, I think doing that will make the game in sooner, although it won't in increase the chances of winning. Right now, the bots, have, the way they are, are working in favor of the purple player. They're clogging up North America. They're in, they're in Europe. They are... Stopping Australia from being taken. They are protecting you in Asia. Um, it looks really good for the purple player. They have so many troops compared to the others. So maybe we'll see a slow expansion now. We could see the Australia take, which would be very, very interesting. I'm um, sorry, the Asia take, which would be very interesting. And I wouldn't have a problem with it. So we might see the slow expansion here. That would be so cool. I would love to see that. We could see a three-point guard here on all of this area. It looks like we will not be seeing that, but it'd be cool to see a three-point guard here. Imagine this capital, and then this bonus right here, and then this 26 works on clearing out this area, and then suddenly you've got, let's see, 11. Well, imagine you don't have this, so now you have nine. You've got nine territories and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 territories. So you're going to get one bonus troop. And maybe you like you stick yourself in North America a little bit. Grab that third, the, the, the 15th territory for that second bonus troop. There's another way for you to secure troop income and to work on the orange bot and progress the game and get it moving a little faster. Like I said, the purple player does not need to do that to take the win. But if they want to take the win sooner, that is, is some options they should be considering. Pink player here still struggling, but very safe, I think. No one should be taking out the pink player anytime soon. Although we may see all these bonus troops go on to this 27 and roll the 14. What's what's that going to be? Well, how many troops has the purple player been getting? We'll see in a second with this cool new animation that comes up over here. So let's pretend the well, we can count on ourselves. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. So 12 plus 27, we'll see a 39, a 39 on a 3 and then a 14. It's a possibility. It would definitely progress the game. What is the purple player going to choose to do here? You have a lot of options to progress the game. They do not choose any of the more recent two that I suggested. Instead, they're just going to take a card. And continue on. Oh, my mouse. I just hit my mouse. So, what we also could see is this 20 here moving up. It won't hurt anything to see this 20 moving up into um, Asia, into the Middle East, and securing one more territory closer to holding 12 ter territories and getting that bonus troop. So right now, there are so many things a purple player could choose to do, and they are not doing a whole lot um, of anything actively. Like you said, they don't need to do that to, to secure the win. Pink player playing very safe. I, I really like the pink player's just tenacity the the ability to bounce back and to keep going this resilience they might not realize that 
it's kind of a 1v1 with, with bots in her, in her mix. That's okay. Because what this shows is that the pink player joined this game to take first place. And I really like that. And how long you can, you can hold out with that mentality. We're going to find out how long the pink player can hold out with that mentality. I've joined games that have gone capitals games that have gone no joke four hours um that's that's on the upper end and that that really never happens but a two-hour game's not unheard of two hour game is not unheard of so we're not even close to that we're 47 minutes in we could go 47 minutes in since i started the lobby not since I started the game. So we're, we're actually about maybe 30 minutes in to this game. So we can do this. The, the pink player, if they can do this three more times, then we're at a two-hour game. Red bot slowly working towards North America. Looks like they might take it, which will definitely increase the pace of actions that are happening now they are easy ai so they are not uh the smartest and that's intentional so this 42 over here and actually i was gonna say this 42 could hit i mean the 42 still could hit this right here um, i might like to see that this 42 coming through and then we're gonna have those plus 12 bonus troops it's gonna equal a 54 that takes this 100 percent even with a terrible roll what you do is so you take this 100 percent, and if it's a really bad roll you take this 20 and you fortify it over and then you have not only denied two troops of income per turn for the ping player you have now gained a permanent two troops of income as long as you never lose that capital and you can focus on then retaking africa so i think this is the time for the purple player to take the pink capital. Another thing to pay attention to is if you're the pink player and you're saying, and actually the pink player is almost to the point where they can take this capital, although that would make them very, very low on troops, be very dangerous, and the purple player could then take both of those capitals. But the thing to take notice is if you're the pink player and you're maybe you don't understand the, the bot's relation to rank points, or maybe you don't care and you just want the highest placement you can, regardless of rank points, you enter the game, you want to play, and you're competitive, uh, it may be you can definitely outsurvive the bots, at least the neutral AI of the blue player, of the blue bot and secure one higher place than the lowest currently available, which would be fourth place would be the one highest higher place than the current lowest available, which is fifth and uh, sixth, which is what I took. So the orange AI is moving into North America, giving the red AI a bit of, a bit of trouble in there. And it's going to stop that acceleration of the game a little bit, especially if the AI continues. And actually, we should have seen that 30 did move up. That stack here did move up. I really like that play. And the purple player may start looking to take Asia. Worst case, they hold that two-point guard I was mentioning. And they're going to hold how many territories we got here. We can just see how much they have total right now. So they have nine. Imagine they had 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Boom! There's an extra two bonus troops. It's almost like you have another capital yourself. And we have moves coming out from the pink player. It looks like they're upset about something. Perhaps they are upset. Oh, no. So they're going to lock their stack. So I'm not sure exactly why they're choosing to do what they're choosing to do. Because they're not going to be able to take out the red player. So if that was their intentions, 
what they have done now is they have made their capital in South America extremely, extremely vulnerable. They could have taken out the red bot, but now the red bot on four cards, if it chooses to trade, what are the chances it trades and puts it back in North America? I think those are very high. So maybe not the best move from the pink player, but it was a move and someone is looking to advance the game. Perhaps the pink player just doing what they did to try and get 12 territories for that extra bonus troop of income, but they are not going to continue to hold 12 territories until their next turn. Because the orange bot has just knocked them down to 11. For some reason, the orange bot choosing to hit the red bot there, the red bot is extremely, extremely weak, and it is very hard to predict what an easy bot will do. I think I'm really enjoying this. The purple player now dealing with more orange troops in Asia. It will be that much more painful to try and secure. I do not think they will choose to go for that now. Once again, taking a card and passing is the purple player. They are at have so, so many troops. And I think when you're at the lower levels, it can be hard to push the boundaries of uh what your risk profile what you think is acceptable in your risk profile so right now the purple player has a i'm gonna make up a number a 90 percent chance to win and they know if everything continues as is it will go up a little bit um if they the ai aren't really getting stronger combined like yes one has almost 60 troops but the other one only has almost 20 and we actually are seeing the pink player make a move and take north america this is amazing are they going to choose to take out the red ai or will the ai even choose to break north america this is great great moves from the pink player and the purple player is definitely not going to let that stand but i do like where their head's at i wish they had done it so much sooner but i understand why that may have not seemed possible this may be purple's chance to come in and take that south america capital and break north america You know, I was saying something right before that, right before those those big moves. So risk profile, yes. So right now, the purple player is slowly gaining over time on everyone. And maybe they have a 90% chance to win, and then in five turns, they have a 92, and then a 94, and, and uh, maybe it peaks around 95, who knows? But maybe they want to push the envelope a little bit and take a risk where it might maybe the risk is oh now we've dropped let's say they take a risk it doesn't work out and now they drop to uh an 80 percent chance to win the game but if it does work out they pump up to a 95 percent chance to win the game and you cut off half an hour if that is acceptable within your risk profile you go for it and I hope now we see that South America cap taken from the purple player. It is their time. The question is, do they also choose? They do not take it. Oh my gosh. Hopefully they at least choose to break North America. And they do. And they're going to continue to attack, putting themselves at 13 territories. 14. So they're going to stop at 14. If you're the pink player, what do you do? I think you consider removing the red bot, removing that, that potential variation that is, that's been harming you. The bot has not been going your way. And I think removing that potential variation from this game will actually be very helpful for the pink player and hey you're gonna get three cards woohoo um it's gonna help everyone involved so i think what you do here is you remove
the bot, you use your trade to retake North America, and then you fortify back to your capital. Let's see how big that trade is, though. Please. It's totally worth it. Thank you. <laughs> Just to advance the game. Okay, so how big is this forced trade in? That is the question. It is going to be an 8 trade. I think it was 8. It was actually a 6. Yeah, it was an 8 with 2 bonus troops. Okay. That is not going to continue to be held. That was very... Um, I'm going to call that something that maybe shouldn't have been done. Um, at least... Gosh, that's that's tough to say. This is being broken, 100%. This may even be taken. I think the pink player now is saying, I have to make moves. I have to make moves or it's not going to work out. So as long as the purple player refuses to hit this capital, even though they have 100% roll on it, um, there may be a situation where you are able to hold North America, although this 27 here could just come in. So it's, it's very tricky and very unlikely. But I think for the pink player, it may be worth the risk. And good on the pink player for advancing the game. Let's see how the purple player responds. They do not have, or at least do not use, a trade on four. That 57. What does it do? Take that capital. Yes, it does. In, in a horrible roll. A horrible roll, but... Oh, just hit my mouse again. I'm just knocking it around today. A horrible roll, but... It was... A enough to secure the capital with that huge advantage and is now going to be moving into this game with an even bigger advantage things are looking up for the purple player for all of us who want to see this game closed out how does the pink player respond this really could accelerate the end of the game depending on how the pink player responds They should not hit this capital. Okay, they don't. Looks like they re-secure North America. It is, I think, futile. And all the troops used to secure North America. Imagine if they had been in those capitals. Pink player would have held it. I think the pink player's chance of winning has gone down. But my like desire to see them win has gone up. Let's see how the purple player responds. Let's let the bots take their turn. If we're lucky, we see a bot move in to here and clog this area up so the purple player cannot come through for future routes to break North America through, through this area, through Europe. With the forced trade in from the purple player, it is a small trade, but it is a trade for extra troops that the purple player wouldn't have had otherwise. What are they going to choose to do? Do they choose to bring North America? Yes, that is, should, that is something they should do. I think they need to break North America and secure South America. They don't need to do that. They could just break North America and leave a stack there. But I think doing both puts more pressure on the pink player and may end the game sooner. So they're going to keep going now. Making sure the pink player does not have 12 territories for that extra bonus troop. And they're just continuing to attack. It'd be interesting to see if they eventually try and take North America too. Because the pink player is not in a great position to be able to respond if the purple player takes North America. Does the pink player have a trade on four? And do they use it to break South America? Oh no. Is this the beginning of the end? Has the pink player left the game? It looks like the pink player finally had enough. They fought 
long and they fought hard there's no doubt about that so good for the pink player and i understand um not feeling like you have a chance to win and deciding not to stay that is completely understandable if you're not having fun you don't have to stay and you you don't have to be number one to have fun i think the pink player tried really hard i think they they may have learned something if, if if they thought really deeply about this game they may have learned something and i think we're about to see the closeout from the purple player considering the pink player will be a neutral ai that will eventually surrender Maybe we'll even see the purple player clean everybody up before the pink player. So the pink player gets to have that, that nice second that maybe they wanted before the surrender at uh, 10 minutes of inactivity. So what could the pink player take from this if they were watching? Well, I, I think I'm the, if I'm the pink player, I think I choose a different capital spot. So they went after the purple or after the blue player so they might have thought the blue player was going to be an easy ai that was going to attack off and leave this open so if that was the case i understand why they put their capital here but that wasn't the case the the blue ai is a neutral ai because the blue player did not ready up while the others are easy ais because they started as easy ais in the lobby so i think different cap placement from the pink player may have been an option they they were the last to place their cap. They they could have known that if the purple players here, they will forever be able to deny Asia. They could have known that and they could have placed somewhere else. I'd have to go back and look exactly where they placed it, but I think when you look at how a capital game went about at the very end of it, when you now know a little bit about the personalities of the players, the skill levels of the players, how the game ended up playing out um that you can then look back and say well where could i have placed my capital alternatively that would have been better so i think the pink player could have looked at a different capital placement than where they placed it currently because as is they were never going to get that that capital there without risking being rolled by the purple player so that's just one of the things and i think the purple player how can you talk a bunch about what the purple player could have done better when they played so well they secured those easy early capitals from the ai they removed me from the game they took continent they took another continent they they not only secured troop income for themselves but they denied troop income from their opponent so the purple player played really well and i would not be surprised to see if they're above a novice in rankings we may see an intermediate um from this individual which is the the highest you can be in this game uh not the highest you can be in the game of risk but the highest you can be in this game we are playing and we are watching well i was playing and we are watching right now so purple player you have the ability to close out the game not right away but we're getting there how are you going to choose to do that well Securing more troop income here by taking North America. Great idea. And I'm glad to see the purple player working towards that. They uh, the AI is just taking their turn, taking their time. Once we see the pink player surrender um i think it is definitely the end it's, it's the end for the purple player now or sorry it's the end for everybody now and the w for the purple player but it'll really be locked in when we know the pink player has 100 uh, surrendered so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to accelerate we're going to go time something speed and we'll skip to the very end of the game and see everybody's ranks.
Okay, we are coming down to the end. That was a lot of time that the purple player took. And, you know, they can take their time. They can get comfortable with the game, especially if they're a newer player. And they get to see how it plays out, see how the easy bots play out, see how the neutral AI plays out. Maybe they're even surprised by that surrender by the pink player after 10 minutes of inactivity. So, good for the purple player. They're feeling out the game and gaining a better understanding, and they're very welcome to do that. And now, the pink player being out, I wanted to touch on my timeline for last week and this week. And so last week, I, I, I normally release videos Thursday morning. Uh, last week, I was very, very busy, and I forgot just how to organize myself, and I accidentally uploaded on Tuesday morning. So that happened. And then this week, busy again. Um, I was actually recording a new thing, a new series coming soon um, that hopefully helps people relax and step away from uh, the stressors that can happen when you play competitive risk. So that'll be coming out soon, and I was rendering that video and made it so I couldn't record the one, this video you're watching right now. So this will be coming out on Thursday evening. I'm recording it on the same day it's going to be posted. I usually record it the night before, but things happen. And here we are. Um, so that's out of the way, looking at the game. What we saw from the purple player in this last little bit was a slow crawl. And I've done this. When I first started playing Risk, I played against only AI. And my go-to strategy was the slow crawl, that slow push forward. And because AI do not understand diplomacy. <laughs> so that was, that was the way to play, is that, that slow push forward. And that's exactly what the purple player has done. Could they have pushed a little quicker and accelerated the end of the game sooner? Yeah, they could have. And I think they realized that around 350 troops or so, they started uh, attacking a little bit, with a little bit of a heavier hand. And the game was accelerating, definitely as the purple player had more income just every single turn, securing new continents, um, securing more territories for those bonus troops. And they will in time learn how to do it faster. So if you are a newer player and you're watching this and you're saying, and this is taking forever. Um, <laughs> I get it. I get it. But that's a part of growing. And I would bet that you, if you have the patience to play this game competitively and go far, then you've played games that took forever to, to play out and finish. Now, the purple player, they could have eliminated the orange player right now. Um, that was an option. Um, because the pink player is actually surrendered, all the purple player needs to do is take, well, remove the neutral AI, uh, sorry, remove the orange AI, and then take this capital, and they don't even need to hit the rest of the pink player. They, they very likely don't know, know that, and that's okay. So I think what we'll see the end of this game look like is, while the pink player, as far as ranked points go, um, they have secured the second placement of the three pl people who entered into this game. Um, as far as how the placement of this game outside of the ladder will actually look like, I think the blue neutral AI will end up taking second place and the pink player will end up taking uh, third as far as the way this game actually looks. And when their surrender kicked in, I suppose technically they took fourth. But, as far as the ladder goes, they're golden. We should see now the orange player removed from the game by the purple player with 464 troops. Overkill, but it is what it is. That's the game we play, and they choose to play it out the way they play it. They're not playing wrong. They're not. They're just playing differently than maybe other people might play it. So go ahead and remove the orange player. Get that force trade in from that. Oh, they're not going to take a force trade in because they are going to trade on four, giving them the six bonus troops. 
they now have plenty. Before they had plenty, now they have plenty plus six uh, to take out the orange player, the orange bot. Are they going to choose to do that now? I absolutely think they should. But they do not. So we're going to wait out another rotation of the bots. Hopefully soon we will see the end of the game. As far as the purple player knows, they're not holding up anybody. They don't know that I'm watching. So this is installing. This is the purple player playing how they want to play. And I think having fun, probably. And that, that's really the most important thing when we play this game. So the purple player is going to march forward. They are going to have to choose to remove somebody from the game. Who are they going to choose to hit? Here we go. We've got money on it being the orange player. And it is. So the orange bot removed from the game, surviving the red bot counterpart. Sat together in the lobby with me for quite some time. And uh, now they have both been removed. And now the purple player has nothing to worry about. No shenanigans except for their internet cutting out or their power cutting off. As is. They should win the game. Here we go. Purple player in the position to remove the surrendered pink player to secure that capital and then hit the blue player. Here we go, purple. They're not putting themselves in a position where they they could use that. They have enough troops here that they can they can secure this capital. I don't think this is a 100% roll, but when you add these other troops, it becomes 100% roll rolls. So this is an easy take. Go ahead and go for it. Good job. Pink player being removed. Now all that's left is the blue player. Purple player already lining up with that 130. I think they need to move this 92 to the 130. And then the next turn, they'll be able to take this game, secure the capital, secure first place. And we will see what everybody's ranks were. And they do not move that 92 up, which is going to prolong the game potentially. Although we could see this 130 roll, the 76 roll, the 40 roll, the 28 roll. There, there may be enough here to secure this capital without this 92. Let's see if the purple player chooses to do it. Here we go. I think we're going to see the roll. It, it couldn't hurt anything. The neutral AI will not attack back. It will not cap run. And the roll is successful. The 172 on 105. Congratulations to the purple player closing out the game. Let's see where everybody's ranks were. So we had an intermediate and a beginner. And I am so happy to have watched these players play. To have Got to watch the game of Risk. Got to participate. I get to participate all the time when I play the game of Risk, and it is so much fun. So get out there. Have some fun playing the game of Risk. Uh, no matter what you're ranked, however your play style, get out there and have some fun.